Hello and welcome. My name is Eric Franzen. We would like to thank you for joining us today for this webinar, a production of Dataversity, with our speaker, Jim Kabilis of IBM. Today, Jim will be discussing cognitive computing in the mobile app economy. Jim is an industry veteran and serves as IBM Big Data Evangelist, Senior Program Director for Product Marketing and Big Data Analytics, and Team Lead of Technical Marketing at IBM Big Data and Analytics Hub. He spearheads IBM's thought leadership activities in Big Data, Hadoop, Enterprise Data Warehousing, Advanced Analytics, Business Intelligence, and Data Management. He works with IBM's product management and marketing teams in Big Data, Kabilis has spoken at such leading industry events as IBM Information on Demand, Hadoop Summit, Enterprise Data World, and Strata. He has published several business technology books and is a very popular provider of original commentary on blogs and many social, social media. Welcome, Jim, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Eric. Great to be here, and uh, nice to be speaking with you all out there in uh, in smart data webinar world. And so I'll get uh, I'll get rolling. Well, you know, the whole topic of mobility just permeates every aspect of our existence. Increasingly, I have an iPhone, I have a tablet, I have a laptop, uh, and I'm sure that many of you have uh, this and, and a wider range, even a wider range than I do, of mobile devices. Uh, a lot of people have wearables now, things like Fitbits and so forth. So mobility is the uh, is the way of the present and the future ongoing in every aspect of our lives, including the economy. But 10 or more years ago, and I was still an industry analyst, I, I, I broached the topic of what I call mobile commerce um, at that time with, with various people uh, in the business world, and they, they looked at me like I had – um, a, a, a third eye in the middle of my forehead, like, what is that? I said, well, that's that's coming. You know, we're all going to be buying and selling and shopping and browsing for, for, you know, products and services through our mobile devices before long. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a long time coming. Well, that time has come, and it's now. So the whole notion of a mobile app economy is mainstream, and clearly. We're all doing it. I've got 10 zillion apps here for the various – uh, retailers and other merchants that I do business with, and I'm sure, I'm sure you do too. So what I'm going to talk about today is not just the mobile app economy, and clearly we at IBM are doing plenty in that regard. We have some uh, fairly important initiatives, including uh, you probably saw last summer we announced an, a partnership with Apple. Apple is um, our partner on um, on building a Watson-enabled. Uh, applications for the business world uh, for mobility uh, on the uh, iPhone and the uh, the iPad and other iOS platforms, and that's just uh, sort of scratches the surface. What we're doing in the area of mobility in Watson is a key piece of the overall smart mobility story. Um, and Watson, of course, is a big data platform in the cloud, and it's built on the uh, a technology, a set of technologies that's called increasingly cognitive computing. And today what I'll be doing is explaining the role of cognitive computing, what it is, first of all, what its value is, and how it's uh, built upon and how it differs from just big data analytics generally. And then what I'll be talking about is the, uh, the whole uh, topic of smart mobility as enabled by cognitive computing in the cloud. And, of course, I'll bring Watson into the discussion, but it won't be – don't worry, it won't be a product pitch. Uh, to be an educational and informational, hopefully inspirational talk for you, with you, for the next 45 minutes or so. So recently I was on a panel at the um, Enterprise Data World, uh, of course, managed and hosted and sponsored by the good folks at Dataversity. It was in Washington, D.C. We had a wonderful talk, me, Steve Ardieri, Adrian Bolden, Matt Sanchez, all around the various, uh, all of the various topics under the heading of cognitive computing. And... Um, I can't advance the slide here. Eric, can you advance you the click slide? On the, uh, sure. You want to click on the tab that says Dataversity up there. Yes, yes. Very good. There you go. Here's my title slide. Thank you very much. I was on the wrong tab, folks. I'm uh, not too swift. So nonetheless, um, cognitive computing in the mobile app economy is a hugely important topic. Here we go. Smart mobility, as I was saying. What you know, smart mobility is increasingly a requirement of uh, of, of everything um, we, on the move. We want to make the best decision 
at all times and do the right thing at all times based on based on what? Based on the circumstance, where you're at, what time of day it is, um, who you're dealing with and who, who, in terms of who you're engaging with, whether, whether it be uh, a retailer, whether it be somebody in your social group uh, and so forth. You want the best data and the best analytics about that entire situation, what's come before, what's likely to come in the near future, what's happening now. Yeah, ideally, you want that delivered to you in the palm of your hand, 24 by 7. Uh, and you want expert advice and guidance on what you should be doing. You know, should you be buying this product? Should you be um, a, a wary of this particular circumstance or, or issue, like a traffic jam that may be 10 miles up the road on your uh, the, uh, the the path that you've mapped out on your GPS? You sort of want to know the issues uh, before they become showstoppers. And it's not just issues in terms of uh, you know, driving and in terms of uh, should I buy or not buy this particular product. Um, but it's issues in terms of security issues, uh, your personal security, increasingly when we're talking about wearable devices. And um, you, know, you, you want to sort of get a, a good sense for whether in any environment uh, you're at risk in terms of like you know crime rates in the area that you happen to be in or um, you know weather issues that may be cropping up and you're not even you don't even realize it because sometimes weather systems move too fast for you to uh, uh, be paying attention to so you sort of want guidance in the, from the smart brain in the cloud uh, about what you should where you should go and what you should do in in real time and it's all about mobility you need this decision support tool wherever you happen to be. Mobile adoption, mo mo mobile devices themselves, clearly, I don't have to tell you, they're everywhere and they're becoming even more ubiquitous thanks to wearables. Um, I don't yet have a wearable, but my friends who just visited from out of town do have their wearables. They have their, uh, they have their Fitbits and so forth and so on. And so I was just sort of looking at uh, what they were showing me in terms of fits into their lifestyle currently, not, not into mine yet, but, uh, well, I believe before long, things like smart watches and smart glasses and so forth uh, might uh, serve my personal needs. You know, our, all of our needs are changing. Our lifestyles, our cultures are changing. We need uh, and we demand and are using a wider range of, of connected devices uh, that are wireless from the get-go. And as the Internet of Things pushes its way into our lives in the form of uh, sensors and actuators and so forth that are embedded in our mobile platforms. When I say platforms, our cars, buses, planes, trains, uh, uh, but also into our homes and, um, and into our smartphones and, and the like. Uh, clearly, the, there's going to be uh, trillions upon trillions of connected devices uh, within our lifetime that will be brought into, need to be swept up into a larger mobile analytics, mobile guidance, cognitive mobile environment to give us guidance because quite frankly, we can't, we're human beings, we can't possibly be following the data, the low level data in terms of the entire situation that we happen to be in, in terms of mapping out all future likelihoods um, against you know what has happened in the past and then plotting out our, 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 our guidance, our, our next best actions ourselves. We need help from the cognitive tools that are in the cloud that can be looking for these patterns. Patterns of opportunity, things that we may not realize that are out there that we should be doing or considering. Um, and of course, the, the likelihood of uh, threats and other circumstances that might prevent us from achieving our desired goals. So in the mobile app economy, we have now the possibility and the very real practical capability to optimize every decision we make, every interaction we engage in, and every transaction we make from the best data and the best analytic statistical models in the cloud that are relevant to our specific needs and situation at any point in time. They include geography, time of day, our own personal circumstances, what others in our situation have done or experienced in the past. We have the benefit of the best data and really the best guidance at any point in time available to us seamlessly in the context of 
wherever we happen to be. And that's through mobile applications, smart watches and connected cars and, uh, you know, in-home, you know, uh, smart devices like smart thermostats. So I move to the next slide. Here we go. So the mobile app economy is driving transformation across the world at large and especially in the, in the business world. Everybody in business now has a mobile device and that increasingly becomes, or devices, and that becomes their primary tool for for doing work. In fact, I, um, I use my iPhone all the time in my job and I've got access to all my corporate email and my uh, calendars and everything else and plenty of other resources that are available to me securely through my iPhone uh, back to all of IBM's uh, tools for its employees to be as productive as possible. And I don't know how I could go back in time to before the day when I wasn't able to access all this information at a moment's notice from wherever I happened to be. And I'm sure you have very similar lives. So the mobile app economy is critically important in business. You know, mobility is primary. 91% of mobile users keep their devices within an arm's that within arm's reach 100% of the time, and mine actually is about a good four feet away from me, and I watch it like a hawk. I usually have it in my pocket when I'm on the road, of course. Um, you know, in, insights from mobile data provide you know, new opportunities for us all. In, in the consumer world, you know, 75% of mobile shoppers take action after receiving location-based messages. Uh, the research has shown, and I think this is going to grow, and I think the, the, the in-store couponing real time wirelessly is becoming will become a standard part of the shopping the brick and mortar shopping experience as the brick and mortar all was uh, increasingly um, the retailers and what they do is they're, reorg they're really reorganizing the entire experience of their customers across both virtual and physical channels and making everything highly virtual in terms of real time opportunities being presented to you wherever you happen to be, including, you know, contextualized within the context of where you happen to be within a particular re retail outlet, yeah, in what aisle, uh, near which end cap. Um, and, uh, and based on what you've purchased recently or what you might have in your cart at the very moment, um, you know, being able to provide you with a contextualized offer right there in the moment um, that may alert you to something that you didn't realize is there that might suit your needs um, and so forth. So I think real-time couponing uh, driven by data and analytics in the cloud will become ubiquitous. Um, it, mobility is all about transactions increasingly. You know, mo mobile commerce, uh, I think because it's so easy, <laughs> because it's always there in the palm of your hand, um, because you know, the sheer power of notifications and alerts and, and targeted uh, next best offers and so forth, mobile commerce in many ways will become a predominant way that we do all, all manner of business. And really mobile is all about creating a continuous brand experience where users have you know, multiple screens and really multiple channels. Um, and they expect um, the uh, retailers and other uh, businesses in general to provide a seamless experience across these different channels so that, um, you know, the back-end cloud is, is, is fully aware of what you've been saying to the call center and what you've been, you know, how, what you've been doing through your interactions through social channels and, and, uh, and ties it into your behaviors within the stores and so forth and ties that all into a seamless experience so that the experiences you have in each of these channels are optimized to those specific channels and are aware of what you've been doing in the other channels uh, on a 24 by 7 basis. And clearly, uh, the multi-channel experience is critically important and you really need powerful data, powerful aggregation and powerful statistical analysis and predictive analysis to do that right so you don't bombard people with spam. Um, and so you're always aware of how pe people's sentiment in terms of uh, to the extent that they prefer to do business with you through one and only one channel, you should have that data available in, in linked to their customer profile and available in the cloud to across all the channels so that you're not bombarding them, say, with offers in the store when they've clearly indicated that they don't like that. Um, that's the sort of thing in terms of the mobile app economy yeah, that, that you need to have the big data resource, you need to have it, uh, the policies and so forth, tuned to personalize the one-to-one -one experience um, to a fine degree. And as we adopt the Internet of Things for more and more 
mobile commerce and other transactions, it'll just intensify. So, you know, as more appliances, say, in your home become IoT endpoints like your refrigerator, increasingly you'll do more ordering from these appliances. And, and uh, so it's all about mobility, and the, the various permutations of mobility will continue to, to expand. The mobile app economy is reshaping enterprise IoT. It's, in, you know, clearly engaging mobile user experiences are everything. Application developers now Principally, the people who are now entering the field of app dev are focused uh, primarily on mobile application design and really developing to multiple form factors on the mobile side is, is, is the way to go. And in fact, it is the standard practice now. You can optimize experiences for the, you know, for the features of the iOS and the Android and uh, the various uh, desktop platforms or, or you know, uh, traditional platforms as well um, in one seamless development cycle and that you can use DevOps uh, techniques to ensure a, uh, a, a seamless and frictionless development of all of these disparate interfaces um, across a, um, a, a, using a common uh, uh, set of methodologies um, to ensure that uh, you can uh, move towards more of a versionless development capability that continues to iterate improvements to this uh, multi-channel interface through uh, A-B testing and real-time experiments and the like. APIs and frameworks for mobile app development are, are critically important in this regard. Um, APIs and frameworks that enable you to design, creatively design these experiences in a way that um, doesn't uh, require the developer to write low-level code, but, but it can in fact design these experiences as dynamic and visual and engaging and immersive because these, these uh, mobile experiences are nothing if not immersive and should be seamless in that sense. They should just you know, fit in, uh, they should just blend in just to the way that people live and work and think. This all needs to be cloud scale, clearly. You know, we're talking about millions and eventually trillions of devices across multi-channels. So the, the infrastructure needed to manage these devices as well as manage the very complex uh, development cycle of DevOps across all these disparate uh, mobile devices um, can get very large in terms of not just the number of devices and the variety of them that are managed, but in terms of just the need for real-time agility and scale in terms of managing the underlying data, metadata, and so forth to be able to uh, support a continuous development cycle across all the different uh, mobile apps and channels. So fundamentally, we're moving towards more of a, of a, a, a scrub, uh, iterative scrum, I should say scrum um, development uh, paradigm. We have small teams that are moving very fast, highly focused, highly skilled development teams that uh, where UX is critically important, mobile UX, really a hacker-like or a hacker way, a, a Facebook-like development approach that's for, focused on short, frequent and incremental uh, release cycles. Where smart mobility uh, intersects with cognitive computing is in the notion of the, you know, the guidance in the cloud. Uh, big data is fundamentally important. Cognitive computing is, is really all about helping you, the user, the individual, think better and to think more powerfully based on leveraging the best data and the best analytics. So fundamentally, the smart mobility experience is, is, is an always-on experience. It's always optimized with the best data and analytics. It's always engaged through social business and social channels um, on a, uh, you know, in your personal life, in your business life. And of course, it's always mobile. It's, it's a wire, a wireless and untethered. It's uh, to use the parlance that we at IBM introduced with the uh, Smarter Planet uh, program, it's always instrumented, always intelligent, and always interconnected, and it's and it's always untethered. So it's all about all of these uh, design imperatives are critically important to, to seamless, frictionless mobile commerce in this new environment. So really, what cognitive computing is? It's um, one way of looking at it is it is artificial intelligence, but it's our cognitive computing is artificial intelligence for this new century the 21st century, and it's a century where big data has come into its own in a major way. Big data and analytics are fundamentally different now. So a new force 
um, in our lives that really had just had not really developed to this extent um, in the 20th century. We've, of course, it's a, it's a steady, unbroken growth, of course, in the amount and the variety and velocity of data. But what we've seen in this century is that um, we've moved into a new era of computing uh, called the Cognitive Systems Era. And I'll, I'll, I'll lay out the historical timeline in just a moment. But fundamentally, cognitive computing is uh, AI for big data, unstructured big data where it's AI that is geared to uh, automating the ability of systems to do the handle the conscious, critical, logical, attentive reasoning, and evaluative modes of thought, just to help us all think better. You know, think, that's the old Thomas J. Watson motto. Well, it's all about thinking machines, but it's thinking machines that learn from data and learn from interactions with people and then adapt their algorithmic behavior, these machines, to these inputs without explicit programming. And let me underline, without explicit programming. Because when we look at this new era, wait for my slide to advance here. Oops, go back. Oh, I, I think I might have deleted that, that slide. Regardless, I'll talk to it. We are now in the cognitive systems era. And what this is, is it's uh, a step beyond the uh, programmable systems era that we've been living in, and we still are very much embedded in. Where if you look at 100 years ago, all processing all execution logic on, on, on information systems was hardwired. It was mechanical and then eventually electromechanical in nature. You had to actually build it into the hardwiring, the logic of the systems that were doing the processing. We're just talking about tabulating machines and so forth. That's the era that IBM was born in before the First World War. Well, clearly, we still have a lot of execution logic that's burned into chips and the firmware and the like. But after World War II, we moved into the software programmable era, where the execution logic was increasingly programmed in higher order languages, you know, from machine languages to assembly languages to 4G and so forth, COBOL and Fortran, and then Java, C++, and beyond. What has happened with uh, in the last uh, you know, really 15 years since the start of this century is that you, there's less and less need to program um, the execution logic into applications because the applications um, are now able to um, derive their 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 logic directly from data from statistical models um, against big data sets. Statistical models uh, for you know data mining and segmentation and so forth that look for patterns, look for correlations and outliers and anomalies and trends and so forth to help then um, the, the, the algorithms, what they do increasingly is, is apply, is develop predictive logic, machine learning and so forth. Predictive logic that is derived from the data itself is being used to drive more and more applications. You know? So what we're talking about is recommendation engines that would rec might recommend, for example, that you buy this book or that CD based on you know, your past buying behavior based on what people like you have bought or recommended and so forth. This is predictive logic, and increasingly this kind of, this kind of logic is built into all manner of applications that can understand you or what you're likely to find interesting or fun or acceptable or not unacceptable, able to find that rapidly and recommend it to you um, those options that might be best suited to your situation, your needs. That's fundamentally how Watson works, and that's really fundamentally how this new generation of information systems works. It's all about helping you make a better de better decisions by providing you with interactive guidance based on data. So thinking, you know, cognition is thinking. And really, thinking machines have been around for a long time. Clearly, that's the whole notion of a computer. But what we have now is, you know, cognition, automated cognition derived from the data itself and from statistical models derived from the data that's helping us to address the time-honored questions that, of course, have been the heart and soul of business intelligence. And now we have essentially a new era of um, business intelligence that's driven by cognitive uh, computing, uh, Watson Analytics, for example. 
is essentially a new generation uh, uh, business analytics decision support uh, tool in the cloud that's powered by cognitive computing, machine learning, and the like. So really, fundamentally, cognition, any cognition, cognitive computing system, exists to answer the following core questions. What is happening? What is happening based on um, what we're seeing now in terms of the data? What has been going on? Why did it, did it happen? Why, you, know, his, you do the historical analysis, and then you use it to uh, understand uh, why that happened, and then what, what is likely to happen under various scenarios, predictive analysis and modeling. And then to help you ultimately to decide what action should I take, prescriptive analysis through decision management, decision automation, and the like. So the new era is increasingly focused on decision automation um, and decision support. Decision automation through guidance from you know, automated next best action logic embedded in systems and decision support. Uh, built from highly visual, highly interactive um, reports and dashboards and uh, guidance uh, in line to various applications. This is what cognitive computing is all about. So here's the slide I was thinking of. It's the one that was out of order, but nonetheless, hardware processing logic gave way to software explicit program processing logic, gave way to data derived processing logic. Um, none of the prior eras are really over, of course. We have hardware processing logic and we have software explicit logic. And now we have an extra layer um, of highly um, uh, contextualized data derived processing logic available to our cognitive systems. So you can develop fresh insights algorithmically from fresh streams of big data. So Watson fundamentally is a cognitive computing cloud and the premier cognitive computing platform. Fundamentally, it understands natural language and human style communication in terms of interacting with humans to learn from your responses and adapt its behavior, adapt its algorithms to, um, to, to fine tune the results that it delivers to you and to people like you on the next turn of the crank as it were, on the next interaction or on the next uh, query. Uh, we saw that on Jeopardy, of course. Jeopardy was that, that particular showcase four years ago was tuned to that particular circumstance, a game show, but Watson has been rolled out into a broad range of uh, business and commercial applications in very different areas, areas from Jeopardy, but it's the same underlying principle. It's able to communicate with you, the human being, using human-style communication. You can, you can have text to voice like we showed on Jeopardy. You could have any any UX you wish um, you know, on top of, of Watson. It generates and evaluates evidence-based hypotheses. So it uses machine learning to be able to develop uh, alternate hypotheses of, of any given subject domain, be it medical, be it uh, multi-channel retail and whatnot. And then it takes fresh data and uh, it determines to what extent uh, one hypothesis is is more is better fitted to the data that it's seeing than another and then it ranks the the results of your query um, to uh, by their degree of co by Watson's degree of confidence in whether they specifically address what you're you're requesting or specifically um, anticipate what you might be requesting fairly soon the whole notion of predictive uh, analytics. Then it adapts and learns um, from you uh, in terms of if you found one answer better aligned with what you were looking for than another. Watson factors that into its data set and continues to tune its algorithms so that in the future it can better field queries of this, whatever sort it was, from you and people like you and circumstances like you. That's the power of cognitive computing. Watson understands you and engages with you. It learns and improves over time. It helps you discover new data sets that you may not have been aware of because Watson is big data in the cloud. Watson has a massive corpus of data, petabytes and so forth. You can load in your own corpus if you wish or you can use any number of, of open source uh, data corpus, corpora I think is the uh, plural of that. Um, any, Watson can really work with any data and answer almost any question um, and in, in pretty much any context. And Watson fundamentally, like kind of computing in general, has machine learning at its very heart. And machine learning in many ways is the core IP 
uh, within any cognitive computing platform. Fundamentally, the cognitive fabric uses machine learning to find patterns within data. Essentially, machine learning are statistical algorithms that, that learn from data, you know, that abstract quantitative models from the data and from prior knowledge, um, and enables data-driven anal analysis, inference, pattern recognition, and prediction. So fundamentally, you know, Watson is tuned to big data, and you can really throw any data that you wish at Watson and train Watson's algorithms to um, your, you know, your proprietary data or public data or a combination thereof. And waiting for it to refresh. There we go. Watson Foundations is a term that we. Um, We've, uh, we've introduced to describe um, our, um, our direction at IBM, which is to bring cognitive computing technologies uh, into our entire portfolio of information management and business analytics uh, tools, uh, both for the enterprise and for um, the consumer world, public sector, and the like. So fundamentally, it's all about, you know, when you look at big data, that's the foundation of cognitive in Watson. Big data is increasingly heterogeneous in terms of the underlying platforms that are storing and, and analyzing it. Data warehouses and OLTP databases, Hadoop, stream computing, content management, NoSQL, and the like. Watson's able to work with and pull data from um, any database of any sort. Um, and Watson's able to deliver the results um, of its analyses uh, to any application, be it business intelligence, predictive analytics, decision automation, and the like. So in many ways, Watson is a unifying uh, a technology and thread across the entire IBM analytics portfolio. And Watson's able to discover fresh insights from fresh data in real time. It can operate in real time. Um, it's built on an enterprise class Hadoop platform, IBM Infosphere Big Insights. Leverages the best of in-memory computing through IBM DB2 with blue uh, acceleration. And uh, it's able to stream uh, uh, its insights uh, through IBM Infosphere streams or, um, or uh, several other uh, underlying uh, data technologies. And fundamentally, you know, IBM Watson is able to uh, deliver its, uh, its, uh, its results, its guidance uh, transparently in the, in the context of decision-making scenarios and deliver this guidance out to your smartphone um, or really to any application you wish um, and with security and privacy and compliance built therein. So what we've been stressing in the last year or so is that we're, we have moved Watson and its tooling and the entire development and platform ecosystem into the cloud, uh, specifically for partner enablement into the Bluemix cloud, where you can combine Watson cognitive services with mobility services, with big data services, and with a wide range of other services that we make available now. In the in, in in the cloud, specifically um, in our soft layer cloud, um, and uh, access by developers through the, through Bluemix, and we provide a, a, a development tools and APIs and frameworks for different um, development uh, requirements um, in the context of uh, this portfolio. So um, in many ways, Watson is not just an enabler for all of our analytics offerings, but it's also at the heart of our Internet of Things. Uh, strategy and roadmap, and uh, move to the next one. So mobility, mobility is a critical import, uh, piece of the overall uh, go-to-market message for for Watson. Um, as I've indicated, we um, first of all, IBM has been in the mobility space for years. We have the mobile-first uh, portfolio of uh, mobility uh, management middleware. Um, we provide a broad range of consulting and professional services to help our, our partners and our customers to mobile enable their applications. And, um, and we, uh, we, we really support the entire life cycle of development and production and management um, of mobile applications uh, by our customers. Wait for the refresh. So Mobile First Enterprise is the um, is the uh, the name for the product family of all these tools. 
for businesses that wish to mobility enable their applications. From you know, integrate data uh, to developing the models to instrumenting your business processes and applications for, for mobility enablement, testing the applications, uh, scanning and certifying them, deploying them out to all the disparate devices that are in use uh, within your organization or your value chain or in your customer environment. Then managing it all and obtaining insight on usage um, patterns and, and the like so that you can then tweak and tune your mobility uh, applications to better meet your needs. And of course, um, security is built into the entire portfolio. And you're able to, as soon as it refreshes, I'll show you. There you go. So you're able to um, mobility enable a broad range of devices and operating systems. What we've um, announced, as I've said, is that we have a strong partnership with Apple. and we've, we've delivered uh, many applications since that announcement that are geared to specific industry markets um, to help our business customers to completely mobile enable themselves around the Apple platform. And we've gotten uh, great reception from the market on our, our, our four go-to-market offers, which are mobile first for the iOS platform. It is the iPhone as well as the iPad. Um, as well as the uh, enabling um, uh, middleware tools to manage it all. Um, Apple Care for Enterprise, Apple uh, provides uh, full support for the applications that we co-develop with them for the iOS platform uh, for our enterprise customers. And of course, there's the mobile first supply and management capabilities we offer so that uh, you can distribute and manage all these disparate devices um, uh, using IBM tooling and IBM support. So the Watson ecosystem is also a very critical part of our mobility story for our customers. We have the Watson Developer Cloud for those uh, customers who want to leverage the full power of cognitive computing in their iOS um, mobility applications. Um, the Watson Developer Cloud, we have over a 1,000 engaged innovators um, that are build, build, building mobility tools uh, on the Watson platform. So we provide them with uh, tools and APIs and uh, gui guidance and uh, training and development and, and support their testing of their cognitive applications on, on our platform. Uh, the Watson Content Store, if, uh, if, if, uh, if an ISV wishes to bring data, um, either their own data or, or for a fee data or even free data from various um, public domain locations. So we can uh, assist them through the Watson Content Store. It's a hub um, for accessing all this data in order to power uh, Watson mobility applications. And we also have the Watson Talent Hub. Um, this is an old number. We've got well over a thousand subject matter experts now providing a marketplace of skills necessary to uh, build beautiful, elegant, and highly useful mobility applications that leverage the best of, uh, of Watson and of our cloud environment. So as I said, Watson, IBM has been in the mobility space for a long, long time and we're recognized as a leader. We've helped transform nearly 4,000 customers with our mobility solutions. Um, we, um, since the, in the last 10 years, we've made close to a dozen acquisitions of mobility enabling uh, tools and, and applications of uh, different partners. We have over 250 business partners right now working with IBM to deliver mobile solutions. Uh, we have uh, the, one of the deepest benches in the world of uh, researchers doing basic research into mobility related uh, technologies and applications and working uh, on projects in um, uh, close to two dozen uh, locations around the world. Um, IBM has received uh, well over 100 patents for wireless inventions and uh, other mobility enabling inventions um, in the past several years. So it's, uh, it's just an ongoing um, focus of investment for us into all things mobility, leveraging big data and leveraging Watson in the cloud. And we have uh, mobility experts who are working around the world in many of our labs, in most of our labs, because as you, as you well know, uh, mobility is a universal uh, requirement of every country, every region, and really every industry. Um, and in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the consumer realm as well as in the business realm. So we stay definitely very, very busy, continue to evolve our, our mobility capabilities and our portfolio and our partnerships. 
Because it all comes down to thinking. Cognitive computing is all about helping us think better by leveraging the best data in the cloud. And really, when you when you look at what Watson's all about, it's not just a big brain in the cloud you know, that is powered by statistical and machine learning models. It's that big brain helping your brain to get bigger. Because you know, fundamentally, Watson is just the premier um, research tool for us normal human beings going about our daily lives to research the best options without necessarily having it to um, to uh, launch into a, a, a research project. It's just a matter of doing a query or another query or yet another query or as many queries as you wish in the context of whatever mobile application you're using to to ascertain exactly what's going on in the world or that small piece of the world that you need to know about right now to have the best intelligence on. And that's what mobility enabling and that's what cognitive computing is all about. It helps you make the best decision uh, and then the, the decision after that and the one after that ongoing. Um, in real time, wirelessly, untethered. And so really think, how can we help you do it better? That's the, that's the power of uh, cognitive computing. And with that, I close my remarks. All right, well, Jim, thank you so much for a really interesting presentation. Um, great slide deck and really fascinating stuff. Um, we did have just a couple questions come in before we uh, run out of time here. The first was you talked about the Apple partnership. Um, is there a time frame that you could share regarding um, support for Android devices or is that already in play in some way? Well, we've, we've had support for Android devices from the start. I mean, since Android was all launched as, a, as an operating system, so we provide, we continue to provide device agnostic support throughout our mobility portfolio. Um, so we don't want people to think that because we've got a partnership with Apple that we're slacking off on support for the other platforms in the mobility world. Even if we wanted to, and we certainly don't want to, our customers would never stand for it. Of course, we're going to continue to support Android to the fullest and invest in it. Okay, and then uh, we'll, we'll take one more question here. Uh, can you suggest a free playground to touch some of these technologies um, in corporate training? Well, you know, if you want a free playground to touch cognitive computing, I strongly suggest the freemium version of Watson Analytics. Watson Analytics, we launched it this past fall. It's free to anyone in perpetuity um, and to get the full power of Watson as a decision support tool that leverages interactive, real-time, self-service, predictive models that are baked into a highly visual uh, tool that any of us can pick up and use immediately. It, it's the best of business intelligence for this new era of unstructured data. And so if you want the power of cognitive, I think Watson Analytics is the place to go. If you don't want to have to pay anything for it, of course, there, you know, if you want to you know, search more data and you want some other features, then you know, clearly um, there are premium charges there. But um, that's essentially a play, playground and a sandbox for the rest of us to get up to speed on the, on the basic technology. We also have um, uh, you know, technology showcase centers around the world for all things to do with uh, mobility and Watson. I, I alluded to that um, in this uh, presentation. And um, it's, you know, it's, feel free to come online to IBM.com um, and uh, specifically to look into the, um, uh, the pages and the resources available on our Apple partnership and on our, our mobility portfolio. Uh, you can get ample information and we'll be glad to um, engage you further. Um, Big Data University is a great place to go. It's absolutely free to learn about all these technologies. And from a developer standpoint, it's a great place to get immersed in the, uh, the convergence of all these technologies at a very practical level. And uh, that's uh, sponsored and hosted by IBM. It's available to anybody for, for absolutely free. So that's, a, that's an intellectual playground that also is a skills development uh, opportunity for the rest of us. Great, great resources. Thank you so much. And thanks again for this wonderful presentation. Um, I'm afraid that is all the time we have for today. 
Just to remind everyone listening, the Smart Data webinar series takes place on the second Thursday of each month at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Details about all upcoming Dataversity webinars are available at dataversity.net. And uh, you should see on your screen now um, a little plug for an upcoming conference we have on the smart data space. Um, that conference will take place in San Jose, California, August 18th through 20th of 2015. The program for that will be announced uh, uh, several weeks from the recording of this webinar, but uh, if you would like to save those dates, there they are in front of you. Um, thank you again for tuning in to today's webinar. Thank you again to Jim Kabilis, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.